Okay, I have unmuted. Okay. Hello? Sir, you can talk, sir. Hello, everyone. Good, uh, good morning. And uh, today I have a wonderful lecture. Uh, most of the students, they are going to face a problem in uh, presentation of their resume to the corporates. And uh, from last three, four years, uh, we are getting uh, feedback from the students in such a way, sorry, feedback from the industry experts in such a way that the resumes from the Gayatri stereotype. Therefore, uh, conducting three or four interviews, the interviewers are coming out and telling Venkat sir or maybe our placement team, they are telling that sir, your uh, students are copying the resumes, uh, they are not using the latest templates and they are not putting their credentials in a right way, etc. Therefore, uh, today we have a very renowned person uh, to address uh, uh, this issue and um, he is uh, very qualified in uh, conducting this type of uh, workshops and um, she is going, uh, first of all, she is uh, ready to help us um, uh, for, for that uh, on behalf of Gayatri Vijay Parshat uh, Colleges and on behalf of our placement team, uh, I am very much thankful to her. Um, so uh, this this workshop definitely Yeah. Hello? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, without wasting much of time, uh, I request uh, Vaishnavi Madam to take up the session. Uh, Vaishnavi Madam, uh, welcome to this particular session. And I don't want to be between you and uh, the student anymore uh, because they are eagerly waiting to listen from you and they are eagerly waiting for your inputs. Uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, uh, for uh, taking your time. I know work, uh, you are most probably in, uh, in the working work from home mode. And taking one one hour time is not that easy. Uh, but thank you very much for that. 
and uh, i request you to go ahead with the presentation thank you very much madam thank you sir thank you for your time students uh, this is a wonderful opportunity it like the uh, uh, best time of uh, vaishnavi madam please interact with her if you are having any uh, doubts or anything uh, you want to upgrade uh, uh, regarding resume building or any any hr tips she is a uh, she is a well known uh, person she can counsel guide mentor you like anything please utilize her time thank you very much and uh, please go ahead thank you madam thank you sir Hello students i think we're all now connected and uh, good to go so hi i'm vaishnavi i work with isb hyderabad so i usually come down to gvp campus to give such interviews and uh, help you with your resume building and everything so this time unfortunately it's all virtual yeah i think uh, you know changes are meant to happen so i really miss being there miss being on campus miss interacting with you all personally and miss vice especially uh, so yeah let's get started with this now for today so we going to talk about why basically what exactly is a resume and why is it important and how is it really going to help you with your career and first to convert a job opportunity so let me start sharing my screen so yes so your resume speak something way beyond what you are and what you are going to present for that 5 minutes okay so you are at hr round which means that you have already gone through few prior rounds like you know your technical your basics and everything so you being the bright minds already like you are with gvp which means that you must be having a very good mcat score very good technicals and very good uh, other background and you all actually belong to the same cluster okay so most of you might have the same and similar kind of background like 10th inter and your engineering right so in such given scenario so how you are going to elevate yourself and differentiate yourself from others is something that decides and defines your opportunity so a resume is something that is going to be that trump card that is going to decide your you know future or your entire presentation so resume by that word like i'm using that multiple times okay so it's not something that's out of the entire context or overrated thing or rocket science it's something just a small piece of paper it's a snap of your 21 years journey okay so just a snap like snap i mean not your autobiography not like you know you're writing your entire life story in that i'm just looking for highlights the key important points that defines you that talks about you and that is something just you okay so so now you understand right so resume is all about you your life your story your achievements your growth your career objectives and everything so it is you and definitely not others by this i mean you cannot copy someone else's resume okay let me be very honest so way back when i was a graduate student and i had to make my first resume i did something very obvious like you go to google type something get a format and try to you know fill in the information so that's what i did but i think that is not something which we have to do because that is not going to define yourself right So, or if you are going to copy, like if you you can think like I and my friend, we are, we are both in the same class, we both have the same grades, same similar things and everything. So I'm just going to copy his and change my name. So can you really be someone else? No. So that is why your resume is something you and unique. So you can't be someone else. So is your resume. Okay. So it's very important to highlight what. defines about yourself so let's for your ease of understanding okay let's just segment that piece of paper into two different things one is functional and one is structural okay so this is the way i'm i'm going to help you uh, with how the interviewer or how an hr person looks at that one piece of paper okay 
So for now, as you're a fresher, let's have your resume limited only to two pages maximum, okay? Because uh, once you have some experience, you'll have something to write a lot about it, or your, about your job role and everything. So for now, let's stick to only two pages, okay? So, and divide that two pages into the structural aspect and the functional aspect. And also, uh, for your use of understanding, let's just you know correlate this story uh, with a with that of a beverage, say Coke. Okay, so you are the participant, and your resume is your product. So you are going to sell that product, like your 21 years expertise, knowledge, hard work, everything into that product. And I am a seller who is trying to sell this product called Coke to a potential customer, okay? Let's see how our journey goes. So I'm just give, going to give this example just to make you understand that we do something similar on a daily basis, but we forget to really recognize or really you know, appreciate that things that we actually do subconsciously, okay? So let's start with the functional aspects, okay? The first functional thing is your personal information like your that, that beautiful page should start with your personal information which is your name phone number and email id your name be i mean that's something static that's not going to change but your email id uh, there were instances where i had seen uh, email ids like shopaholic underscore one two three uh, cute girl darling for you at one two three or gmail.com or something no I think this is time for you to start developing the professional attitude, okay? Now the life is actually going to change for a better good. Let's hope at least. Uh, you're going to understand the reality only once you get into that. So at least now let's assume this is going to be good, professional, different and everything. So let's start things, change. I mean, changing your basic things and adapting to be professional right from zero. Okay, so have a very nice, good email ID, just your name, your dot or any other character and your surname at Gmail or whatever mail you're using. Okay, so don't give any unnecessary characters or unnecessary words or lingos or something. Okay, be as professional as you can. So once we are done with that, the next comes your career objective. This is something that is going to connect you and the interviewer, okay? So in case of a product, like I'm the seller now, right? So in my product, like say the Coke, Coke, the name Coke is your personal information. Your name is whatever XYZ. So my product name is Coke. My career objective, like something, the projection which I'm doing is the tagline, okay? That is where I, as a customer, is is going to be interested about the product. In the same way, it's about you also. Your career objective should be in tandem with whatever you're sitting for the interview, right? So you cannot have something like, I want to have my own company or I want to go to the US and do MS. Those are all your underlying or your, in, in you know, something that you have, which you need not really share with the interviewer. Your job in that room with that paper in front of an employer is to get the job converted. That's it. So you're already there, which means that you have already gone through a few rounds and you have already passed those rounds. This HR round is not something that's going to decide like, you know, uh, to judge you or something. That's only a easy round where you are, there's the only, unless you mess up, you're not going to be eliminated or they're not going to look for negatives in you or even positive. That's just an easy round. It will just pass through. That's it. They're going to just see the pigment. So your career objective should be in tandem with your industry and your employer. So it should be relevant and it should be something like how you're going to use your skills with the organization. Okay. So you can really expect some questions like, what do you want to do? Like, where do you want to see yourself after five years? Where do you want to see yourself after 10 years? All these questions in, in your interview are based on career objective. So you write your career objective, like I want to 
outshine in the company and when they ask you what's your objective for five years like i want to go to us i want to do ms i want to join something else no whatever you're writing here is something about what you're going to speak they should be in line exactly okay moving on we have qualifications and grades the third one okay these are again something static you already have your grades your qualifications most of you might be having your 10th inter and your engineering so have it in a chronological order and so there are few instances where a student uh, might have a drop in their grades at some point say they went below 60s or 70s or something so when the interviewer ask you like uh, what happened so they try to give some notorious reasons like yeah i was not well i was unwell i was hospitalized so that's something very common okay so here i would suggest you to kind of bring in something like that would tell about your strengths okay so i'll give you an example so if your uh, sem 1 math math grades are really bad okay so is better you honestly tell them saying that sir uh, my math was really bad in term 1 sem 1 so that's when i realized that's my weak point i worked on my weakness and see eventually in my subsequent sem i did better so that is that in that way you are actually talking about your weakness and turning that into your strength so which shows that yes this person has an idea of about himself about his weaknesses strengths and everything okay so that is how you can even turn a negative or not so positive point also to negative here i'm not asking you to really give a fake thing or make up a story or something but be relative like you know don't give very obvious reasons be honest you know as far as you can okay so in our uh, in my product so my coke in my product the qualifications would be the small grid where you see uh, fat contents calories and all so this this is something that is common to all the beverages right but people who are really interested if they are sensitive they are going to look at it so this is just a common thing that will pass by okay so the next thing would be your skills okay technical and interpersonal that is where you is going to come back again okay so there are situations where you can be a ece student sitting for a it industry job that happens that's quite common okay so in such situation it is something really important for you to prioritize your skills okay so you being a ec or triple e student you your skill set is different from that of an it student right so but when you are sitting for an it interview it's better you give the it relevant skill set in your first priority and give your core in your next you know subsequent priority i'm not asking you to you know give something which you don't have or something which you don't know so if you are writing you know c or c++ you must know the basics at least of the entire whatever uh, software or skill you are writing there but make sure that you prioritize so here i would suggest you to have different kinds of at least uh, two to three different versions of your cv one for manufacturing one for it and one for any other sector so that you can prioritize things and also this is where you can actually showcase your knowledge like how how much you know about things so if you are writing something a very relevant jargons or something that's where a positive discussion is going to build and the interviewer is going to know much about you okay so the next thing would be you you writing about your strengths i have seen the strengths part is a direct cut paste from google and the entire class is going to have exactly the same strength like each and every student is a team player each and every student is like a leader each and every student is adaptable yeah you can be like all of us are at demonstrate such skills at some point but there can be some really interesting and peculiar things about you so it's better you step back think about yourself introspect what exactly are your strengths okay by this first thing you will discover something about yourself 
Second, you can be confident when you talk about them. Third, you can relate. So this is my strength. This is my skill. This is what I want. See, everything is in a straight line. So I'm going to be right on the spot. Okay. So for this, uh, I would suggest you to talk to your friends, uh, your, your uh, parents, your mentors, your teachers or someone. So these people who actually know you closely can tell about you, tell something about you, tell you about your strength. You, who knows, you could be a good negotiator who actually solves some things between your friends or you could be a very good organizer who actually plans for each and every movie well ahead with everything. So these are something, small things about you, which you don't know, but there's something uh, about yourself. So it's better you think about it very seriously who knows you can discover something interesting about you okay so moving on we have your relevant experience uh, like your in your case is going to be projects and uh, internships okay so experience here as you go on you can write about your jobs your uh, activities and everything but now let's stick to your internship so internship by which i mean you have to talk about what you have done in that particular period, okay? So there was a situation wherein that um, the person wrote about a company, wrote about what she did in the company, and when I started talking about the company, he knows nothing, literally. So that is like a setback, right? Who knows if the interviewer is an ex-employer of that company, he knows everything, so you can't take anything over there. So it's better you know about the company, like the management, the CEO, the latest trends, uh, you know, people from that side or the branch where you worked. So, so that you can talk, you can build some conversation. And that's something uh, opener for you to actually talk about your real time experience. So that is the first place where you came out of your cocoon for the first time and you're trying something in some new world. So you are out of your classroom for the first time. So that you have to really show your interest, your passion, like how happy you are, how interesting things are when you actually did something with your own hands rather than just seeing on the board or writing in the exams or something. You, you, you actually experienced it, right? So it's better you talk much about it and you establish a connect with the interviewer. Okay, this is going to be a game changer for you, really. Okay, so it's important you're not going to take things here. Okay, so the next thing, uh, okay, uh, the relevance. Why relevance is important? So in my case, like uh, my product, uh, so th this is a real-time example. What happened is that in India, they want to launch a you know, marketing campaign for this product, okay? So they had three, uh, you know, uh, graphics like pictures to promote this product. In the first picture, the person was running, he was tired. So in the second picture, the person had this beverage. In the third picture, he was happy, he was running. So he got, he gained some energy, okay? So that campaign was like blockbuster in India. It went well, they got, you know, good sales and everything. So yes, without thinking about the relevance, that person applied the same marketing campaign in Arabic countries. So Arabic countries by which we mean, so we read generally in India, we read from left to right. So in Arabic, they read from right to left. So what happened? The same campaign, now they're reading from right to left. So the person was happy, healthy, he's running. Second picture, he had that beverage. Third picture, he fainted. See the difference? So if you're not going to establish that relevance, so whatever is the best thing, I mean, whatever projection you have in your mind is not going to work in your favor. So relevance is that important, okay? So moving on, we can have your achievements, like you can talk about any value additions. So achievements, uh, again, last year I have been through a few resumes, like 
everyone has taken part in Swachh Bharat. I really appreciate you all for that. But there can be something which you have done, something unique from that of others. And again, I, I am not really interested about your achievement in one of the competition in your sixth grade or seventh grade. No. Achievements are something that that are really of some value and really of some consistent and they should include some pattern. So don't write something really off the topic, okay? And uh, there were students who wrote uh, sleeping as a hobby. Come on, sleeping can never be a hobby, it's your necessity, okay? So avoid such things. And also, yeah, there was a student who wrote, uh, she really loved reading books. I said, oh, so do I, who's your favorite author? She, she said, Agatha Christie. I was like, oh my God, I love her too. So just tell me which book you like. She was like, I like all the books. And she just started giving some vague information. So which clearly shows that, no, she is not really a fan of Agatha Christie. She just made up something. She just tried to cover, okay? so. This point, I'm not really going to judge her job offer based on if you if we both have the same favorite author or same favorite uh, hobby or not. So we're not going to judge you based on that, but we're going to have some kind of implications and impressions like on the candidate, like you know what kind of candidate uh, he or she is, like how honest he or she is. Okay, so it is important for you to write something very relevant. So it would be great uh, if, if you write about uh, the trending things like uh, robotics, automate, automation, or artificial intelligence or something. These are something really happening things, I understand. But if you don't know what are the current trends or if you don't know anything about it, avoid it. Only if you're interested in such things, write about them so that they can be a point of discussion. Okay, so in the entire thing, at any point, if you don't know anything, it's very important for you to say the simple three words, I don't know. Okay, don't try to cover up, don't try to bluff or make it up. Okay, so I can give you an example. Like uh, there was this person who was attending an interview and uh, the interviewer asked him about a product that was just launched on the same day. So the person, uh, the candidate was honest enough to say that I don't know. So, and uh, he got the offer, not because he said uh, he don't know. It's it just because his technical said everything, uh, 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 all the other things were good. At the same time, he didn't fake anything. Okay. So this person is none other than Sundar Pichai. So this was uh, his interview with Google way back in 2004. And that was the day when Google launched uh, its uh, Gmail. I think someone is raising their hands. Is it? Okay, so I'll address all the questions from the chat box at the end. So let's just continue with this. Okay, so he was Sundar Pichai. So th these are the things that will talk about your personality, like how honest you are. Okay. Mm, with this moving forward, now in this functional thing, there are some, there's something which I want to highlight is uh, you can have multiple versions of your resume. So something that's going to be static in all the versions is your personal information and your qualification and grades. These are static, they're not going to change. Something that is going to change based on the employer or the industry is your career objective and your skills, okay? So you're not going to talk about something which you don't have, which, which you don't have, okay? You are, I think, uh, yeah, thank you for unmuting. So you're just going to change the projection. You're going to change the angle in which you are just showcasing same thing, okay? So based on your career objective and your skills, it depends on your relevant experience and your achievement. So you're going to project these things based on that. So you're just, again, it's just the way you're projecting it. You're not going to change the entire thing, but you're just showing the another way of it. That's it. <clears throat> With this, let's move to the structure. So the functional is something that's going to go inside your brain 
okay that's the content the structure is the thing which you're going to see with your eyes which is like that you know the tangible aspect which is going to you know not hurt your eyes give, give some pleasant experience to your eyes okay so something that decides is your point so this is not definitely not your crack book so don't start using your uh, different different fonts cursives and everything stick to times new roman or calibri these are basic and professional so which are usually used for official things so stick to that and the size it's it's better you have 14 for headings and 12 for text that not going to harm your eyes and that's going to be perfect in the spacing you can have 1 or 1.5 uh, that's going to be legible and it's going to have create some interesting or uh, overall good effect and then tens uh, either stick to one thing have some uniformity not like you have your active voice and then your passive voice you have you have your past tense and then suddenly you jump into the present tense let's not make it clumsy have a uniform tense all throughout okay and then grammar and typos so if you are someone who make some blunder disasters with the spellings or something like me i did that so run a check so take pick up each and every phrase run a check in google or your grammarly or anything make sure that there are no grammatical or spelling mistakes or you know sentence formation mistakes or something so make it really very clean okay so let's just highlight few do's and don'ts i think we now have an average a big picture of what we are actually looking at so the first thing is you need to stand out so you're all like at least thousand of you with the same skill set same knowledge you, you already at one point which means that you you're some, you have something and not just something a lot in common but it's really important for you to bring it down and show how you that one person is different from the other person so you always need to make efforts to stand out and the next re relevant uh, important thing is your relevance so i'm looking for this job this company this interviewer so make sure that you are projecting that very clearly do not talk about anything or write anything that is irrelevant or that will create some kind of biases like very make uh, make it a point you don't write anything that a sensitive political religious or something so you should be very clean and very much to the point and professional okay the next thing would be know your employer that is very important so if you are sitting for a tcs employ uh, interview so know who is the ceo know what's the management structure talk to someone who is already working at tcs like your seniors or you you can have your own contacts understand the process understand the job description like you should know what you're going to do once you're employed like you cannot give a vague answer like yeah i'm going to be there i'm going to try i'll learn i'll see i'll think no you should have a, at least the basic and the minimum idea of what kind of work or what is what's the output that is expected out of you only then you are going to repeatedly project the same thing in your interview also and your resume also so that is how you are going to build that connect with your employer okay so the next important things is yes customize so you cannot have a same kind of uh, resume for all of your interviews so each employer is different each industry is different so it, it's it's tough to make different versions so at least stick to one resume per industry or per sector okay so where you prioritize your skills project your skills and talk about your relevant experiences and something like that okay something that is a big no no is too much is too bad don't dump the entire information in that is like yeah go search whatever you want no it should be crisp and simple and to the point okay so i should like if 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 if, if i want to talk, see something i should be easy it should be easily identified okay so where is it and everything so the highlights headings and everything should be in place 
and also just like how you're going to groom yourself and how you're going to keep yourself clean and everything even that one page should also be very clean so the, the hygiene of that one page is also really very important so that it's not going to damage your eyes distract your concentration distract your focus and uh, the employee should not be in a situation to like you know i'm looking for something but i'm not going to i'm, I'm not finding it where it is okay so the thing should be in a perfect chronological order like how we discussed in the functional aspect so use the same criteria same chronology so that so interviews are usually used to search information in the same order so it's better you stick to the same order so that it's easy and we both are on the same page next important thing is uh, no misleading and no fake information so if you're do, going to write something that is off the topic or that's something not truly you you know you might end up being on spot you don't know what to answer and that's something the most embarrassing thing that can ever happen so this is why i repeatedly uh, say that you should never ever copy your resume that is your craft so you literally have to mold that crap with your own hands okay only then you're going to know the each and every letter each and every word of your resume so that even if you if they're go, going to ask anything out of it you can answer something okay so if you're writing anything like if you're writing your hobbies your interests or something know the basics so if you write even if even if you're writing your hobbies as watching movies also you should know something like what are the genres what the directors or something so if you are going to write about the automation or the ai and something like that so you should know what are the recent trends that are actually happening so i would suggest you to stick to something that would you know kind of have a connect with the interviewer and that that can actually develop a good and healthy conversation instead of just like a piece of information like yeah i know about this so that that's something the keywords or the jargon that you use in your uh, skills or your re relevant experience uh, criteria there that, that that words are something that an interviewer is going to pick up out of interest like he can be interested to know more like what exactly did you do in this like what exactly you uh, you know about it or something like that so that that's a pick up thing that will grow your conversation and such conversations are really very important because if that's going to be a question answer kind of interview a sort healthy i mean you, you don't it's not a feel good kind of interview but if you are going to drive the interview like you are going to anticipate what the other person is going to ask you and you are going to channelize your answers or build that chronology make everything fall into the same perfect straight line then yes your chances of getting connected would be very high so i'm i'm reiterating the same point that hr interview is not something where you're going to be rejected or thrown out or judged or something no we are not going to judge you we just going to see your fitment your mental health and your iq your your health overall into the particular job description that's it we're just trying to fit you even if you're out of something we just want to see if you can really mold yourself into this so avoid things that will fall out of that small job description box or that that small organizational part okay so once you have this perfect nice page of your interview of your uh, resume is very important you take multiple copies yes again don't use too many colors or pictures or something no this is definitely not your craft book so have a very plain black and white nice paper uh, print out make multiple copies give one copy to the interviewer have one copy with yourself so that we can refer to the same point while we are talking so you you unnecessarily think yeah what you're talking you need not peep into what she is referring to right and also there was this one super intelligent kid so he took a print out of the resume made a nice perfect square fold of the resume kept it in his pocket and he walked into the interview room and i asked for his resume he was like pulling out making it nice and giving it was like what should i actually do with it okay this is the something that the underlying thing that kind of gives some kind of impressions about the person
okay so we're trying to judge we're not trying to judge or something but we're trying to form some uh, impressions like see how it is going to fit in our organizational uh, views and standards and cultures that's it okay and also uh, with, these are all the practical so your resume is going to be something practical focused oriented towards the employer customized and everything but at the same time Although you're practical, you should never lose your emotional or your behavior balance also. So uh, there was this interview uh, for uh, Satya Nadella for Microsoft, wherein he was an, uh, asked a question uh, that if he find a baby on a crossroad, what would he do? He said that he would go and uh, call 911. Uh, so that that shows about the behavioral aspect over there. So you, as a human being, you should first tend to pick the baby make him feel comfortable or safe and then call 911 okay so although how much ever you're practical and focused never lose your emotional balance also and at the same time just don't push your emotional quotient so uh, in front that you lose your practicality so have that very fine and you know thin balance and well balanced entire uh, in your uh, regime okay so yeah whenever you're so taking this resume to your interviewer, make sure you have your perfect grooming, your smile, your confidence, like don't fake your smile, you can easily find that out. So have a perfect healthy smile, calm yourself down, you can have some good meditation or something so that you can be peace of mind, have a peace of mind. And interview is all about your presence of mind, okay? So if interview is 100%, I would say that 50% is your resume building. Like, you know, there's a famous saying, like if you have four hours to, you know, cut a tree, so I would spend more than three hours to sharpen my axe. The same thing. So if you have 100% in your interview, 50% or somewhere more than 50% is your resume, which is pre-interview. So if you're perfect with your pre-interview, if you know what you're, what's there on your resume, you can really kill that. Okay? So interview is just the presence of mind with a 30 40 percentage and post interview your negotiations your email exchanges and everything uh, is just a 10 percent so if you're done with this you're halfway through already okay so maybe uh, now that uh, because of all this uh, changes lockdowns and everything even you should be adaptable to to new technical changes also like having uh, online interviews or something like that so same thing so i have seen uh, people sending me the files with the names like word doc version one version two or something like that no again your your document should be after your name like if your name is abc it should be abc.cv that's it make it very simple and you know in, in every point like we will look at relevance at every point that that the only thing we are going to look at that's it okay so with this, if you're there, you can sell your product well. And with this, I can sell my product well, okay? So let's just uh, go to the final few things like uh, in um, coming up days, maybe once you're, ha maybe you're having your uh, mock interviews from today or tomorrow. So it's better. I would suggest you to read some blogs and interview tips so that boost your confidence and uh, you can, even uh, get accustomed with some routine questions or routine uh, phrases or something like that. So it's not a first time for you. Like you're not going to have that question for the first time and you can you form the answers for the first time. You should always have all the answers ready. So this should never be something which you're hearing for the first time. Okay. So you can even uh, keep yourself updated with uh, some forms or something like that so you can know what's actually happening in the industry or what the industry is looking for so because industry and everything changes every minute every not just every minute maybe every month or something like that so if there are any kind of innovations or something you should be up to the day up to date and everything okay and and um, as an interviewer, I do the same thing too, okay? So if you're not going to update yourself and I'm moving one step ahead, there is going to be a lag between both of us. So all of us are moving, so 
you should also move ahead. So if you should still not use uh, 2000s and to even 2019 is actually too far off now because we're already mid 2020. So you should be in this uh, scenario, okay? So you can even talk to your mentors or seniors or uh, people uh, who already placed in your uh, desired industry or desired companies so that you know what kind of interviews happens and what kind of questions you can expect in an interview and uh, what kind of work environment you are going to have and what are your growth opportunities and everything so that you will have some first hand information before you talk with your interviewer. And uh, I know this is uh, locked on, so you have a good amount of time. So spend the time uh, to read something really interesting, develop your uh, knowledge. There are many online courses by one good universities, which are actually free. You can register yourself and improve your skills. And yes, you can even watch some good movies also. This movie, uh, The Pursuit of Happiness, is my favorite. And there is one interesting scene on interview. Uh, it's a must watch and even the movie as a whole is something really interesting and a very decent good watch so I would uh, suggest you to watch that. So I think uh, with this um, uh, I did cover most of the thing which I wanted to. So bottom line your resume is your product so just like if you want to sell a product a bottle of coke so how you're going to see things, how you're going to visualize things and how you're going to direct that to the relevant customer and how you're going to project that. The same thing, your product is your resume. You have to direct and project that product to your interviewer and make that sale deal happen. So I, I think uh, we can take some questions now. Uh, so uh, one important thing I would uh, like to add is you can, uh, with, with this uh, innovations happening, it's better you add your uh, LinkedIn profile to your uh, resume from now itself and keep your LinkedIn profile also well up to date. Okay, so LinkedIn is something again professional. This is really different from your Facebook or your Instagram. So the kind of content you share over there should be professional. Like even your display picture should also be professional. Your tag, your career objectives, your experiences, everything should be relevant and career oriented. So there are cases where we, uh, if you want to do some background check or something, we usually tend to see your uh, LinkedIn profiles also. So it's better you stay updated well in advance and uh, have everything ready. Okay. So let's see some chat questions. Yes, there is a question, ma'am. Uh, what about writing the ambition and goals? So ambition goals are something which you have to write in your career objective. Okay. So uh, don't write in different like ambition, something, your goal, something. So have summarized the entire thing and write it in two lines. Your career objective should not be more than two lines. So you can say that I want to see myself in so and so role. So this is this is the skill set I have. So this in with this organization, with this skill set and with this ambition, I'm going to correlate these four dots or three dots and then do my best. So your goals and ambition kind of fall into your career objectives. Uh, we request students to post your questions in the chat. Uh, there is one thing ma'am can we use a creative templates in the resume creative templates uh, for now i would not suggest you to go way beyond it like you can do minimum things okay the, definitely as i told you this is not your craft book or you don't have too much of information like uh, like once you have an experience so then you will have something to project it in form of graphs or tables or something there you can use some kind of animation or your charts or your templates or something that's something relevant over there but you being a fresher i would suggest you to keep it simple and plain and no no much of animation or templates or something 
keep it very simple ma'am someone has a doubt what is career objective actually career objective is what you are going to project yourself like what is your so there can be uh, something like this is my skill set okay so this is a, this is my interest your passion that talks about what actually you are so you can write something i with my skill set or passion, passion towards my uh, towards uh, innovation or technology i would want to work with this company and improve my skills further and also be a value addition to the company so in this way you are uplifting and giving value addition to yourself and also showing some value addition to the organization so that one line is something which is a prospective uh, conversation builder so be careful with that one line and be sensitive about each and every word you use in that one two lines so this is question is it important to mention your hobbies no this is not mandatory that you would mention your uh, hobbies but yes you can write something like your interests okay only if they are relevant so don't write something like sleeping shopping something like that these are not your hobbies that and they're definitely not relevant to your resume or your career or your interview so if you if your hobbies are reading uh, something that's interesting or uh, uh, skill building or something like that yeah maybe you can mention them because that will help to build a good conversation personal information uh, stick to your um, name uh, phone number and email address that's it uh, writing about your birthplace your native place your parents information what what do they do and all i would suggest not to go with that because we 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 have passed that phase already we are in 2020 we are not much really interested in that information now qualifications do you expect from uh, triple e background people so we are not this is a hr round so we are not going to differentiate based on your uh, expertise like your core your technical aspects are already being screened in your technical round so here even if you are a triple e student ec student or it or whatever we are going to see only the fitment so so the questions like uh, what do you want to do in your future like if you are answering like yeah i will just uh, work for two years then i'll go to ms so that is a big drawback that's like a turn off like the, uh, i'll understand that this person is not going to work with me for long and i may not really be interested with you anymore so the format is same for all of you all the the view we are going to see uh, or ex expect something out of you is same irrespective of your core because it's a hr it's behavioral so everyone needs to have the same or similar kind of presence of mind and similar kind of behavior uh linkedin profile ids you can add your skills you can uh, if you have attended any workshops conferences you can write over there if you have any uh, if you have done any certifications like online certifications or uh, any skill building or something like that you can uh, write over there and uh, like you have separate column for skills you can mention your skills so whenever even in the future if someone is actually looking for a coder or a developer or something when they give the same keyword search so if you have the similar set of skills if your profiles are going to be pushed forward so that the interviewer can have a look at your profile you are an electrical engineering student and so the question asked by interviewer like why are you joining this company so yes this is something really very tricky so you can't say that just because uh, i don't have or i didn't like the job and companies or the industries that came to my core domain i'm sitting here so it's up to you to figure out the really effective way of projecting okay so even though you have taken triple e or any other uh, electron electrical background thing and you are here for an it interview so you can try to project your passion for it you can try to project your uh, the growth the market and the industry is seeing or you can even say that even though i was there i always i was always inclined in developing the skills related to it so you can it's 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 really important for you to establish that link between 
two different things. So the, the thing that can establish the link can be only be your interest. You can't blame it on anything or anyone else just because my father asked me to do triply. I, I did triply, but I'm like, I did. That is not the answer we are expecting. You should only use the car of your interest, your passion, and your growth. Yeah, is it is it uh, right to tell I don't know when you don't know the answer? Yes, it is really very important to say I don't know, but you can't keep saying I don't know to entire thing also. So if you write something on your resume, you must know that. So there is no other option to that. But if they're asking something, you know, beyond and, and you're in a conversation and they're asking something beyond what you have written over there, and if you honestly don't know, just please say you don't know. Don't cover things up or make things up. That's going to actually make things worse. Like date of birth, etc., etc. What are the other things that are to be excluded from the resume? Yeah, you need not write your date of birth, your place of birth, your parent details, or your recommendations, or something like that. At this point, it's not required. Uh, chronological or reverse chronological, uh, thankfully it's better uh, we go uh, chronological because that's logical. So let's stick to that. Uh, participation in workshop is not uh, your, uh, your experience. You can write that under your achievements or your uh, extracurricular, uh, co-curricular activities because that is something related to your studies, but you have done something outside your classroom related to your skill set. So that comes under co-curricular activities. It is not your experience, but definitely if you have learned something in that interaction, you can try and talk about that in your interview, but you need not mention it over there. You can just write participated in so and so. That's it, we're done with that. Can we mention ongoing courses that are not completed till date in the certifications? Uh, no. So whatever you're mentioning in your resume should be up to date and valid. So at any point, if they want to check any of the credentials in your resume, you should have a justification or a certificate or perfect uh, documentation for that. So you cannot write that is not done or that is uh, incomplete. Is internship mandatory? Um, I would suggest uh, you to have an internship or a project or at least something like that. So which is, I think is part of your curriculum in your uh, last year, I think you would uh, eventually do that. So if you're not doing an uh, on-site uh, in, in internship also, if you're doing a project, so make sure that you know about the company, make sure that you know what you're doing and uh, what is your uh, the, uh, place where you can talk about your interest and skills or something like that. When we are from non-IT background and attending an interview and if they ask why you want to join the company and honest answer at this point won't do much good, I guess. So it won't be effective answer. <coughs> As I mentioned, yes. An honest answer like uh, uh, everyone, uh, I thought uh, Triple E has a better rating than IT. So I joined that, but now I'm with an IT interview for some other reasons is not going to fetch you a good uh, impression. So the link here should only be your interest and passion. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can establish link saying that because of my passion and interest towards IT, I'm here. <coughs> Internship certification can be mentioned as achievement. You can uh, actually write that in your experience so far because that's the only kind of first-hand experience you have. You can uh, write it over there instead of uh, achievement. Achievements are something, so um, you can divide like this. Your, uh, your experiences, uh, relevant information uh, can be your projects and internships. Your achievement is extracurricular. So co-curricular is your uh, experience, extracurricular is your uh, achievements. Uh, how many certifications can be mentioned to the maximum extent? Yeah, this is something which I wanted to talk. Uh, again, don't dump too much of information. Yeah, don't dump too much of information at any point. If you're writing about your hobbies, stick to three, maximum four. If you're writing about interests, again, same three or four. Same in your achievements also, three or four. Don't write too many of them, okay? I attended a workshop in which I did not learn anything new. Should I include that workshop in your resume and that? 
um i think you can just write about that again uh, like how i told you you can prioritize that thing okay if that workshop the the name or the topic of the workshop is really related to the industry or the interview which you you are sitting at you can write that in number 1 or number 2 if you have not learned anything new or if you find that relevant irrelevant but see you see the names like iit or uh, organized by any good institutions can have some kind of weightage so you can use them in in the order of 3 or 4 okay ma'am if they ask to say something that is not in your room what is it exactly so that is why it is important that you don't dump entire information you are only using the highlights you are only it's like a you know teaser you only give the highlights important things and you create that interest so that when they talk you have a lot to talk so just like so if you if you see the ppt so there's something less content in the ppt and i am talking more so even your resume is something like that you have keywords highlights in your resume and you have something more to talk about it ma'am uh, if they ask you where are you going to see yourself in 5 years what should be your uh, our answer so that so especially in such questions don't directly say that even if you have ambition to do your ms which i'm sure most of you have uh, don't give such answers you you can uh, this is where you can actually talk to your seniors or your mentors know the organizational hierarchy i think someone is sharing the screen i think someone else is uh, sharing the screen can you guys see that yeah thank you yeah ma'am yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah uh so um yeah five years so you can know the organizational structure managerial hierarchy so if you join as a uh, consultant what is your next career growth in five years so if you can really relate and use such same uh, words or designation that's where they are going to be connected so you can ask them like what is the journey of for a person who is there with your organization for 5 years like in your seniors or something so the, based on the designation they say you can use something related and also you must it's important to uh, tell how you're going to improve your skill set also you can say that now that everything is online i'm i'm going to have some courses so uh, that do some skill development in my weekends or something like that um i think uh, the many questions uh, i would i'm glad uh, i'd be glad if i'd be able to answer all of them but due to time constraint uh, i might not be able to answer all of them but one thing maybe you can just jot down them in one document or in google doc or something so i'll try to reply to as many as i can um and i will even share few resume formats like uh, the best and not so best ones so that you can see the difference by yourself and uh, structure yours by yourself and uh, i i hope i'll meet at least a few of you uh, in the mock interviews in a couple of days uh, for the next few days so uh, i i'll try to share some important information over there also so for now i think uh, it's so uh, i can call it all uh, sir uh, dean sir yeah vice chairman madam thank you very much uh, again it is pleasure listening to you even we uh, upgrade ourselves uh, not only student uh, by listening to you by uh, uh, your tips uh, whatever tips you are giving it is very much useful to the students sir so i request uh, as barani uh, is the person uh, behind your talk i request barani to give the closing remarks you i want to see barani face and uh, i i am very happy if barani gives the closing remarks barani please go ahead sir thank you sir it is uh, giving me a pleasure to introduce my friend in front of my students and uh, taking her inputs and they are very valuable inputs i expect every student to make use of this inputs because after clearing technical and technical round and you being rejected in hr round is not like a, a great thing to listen because hr round is not to reject you it is to 
it is like a bridge between you and a company so it is just a, a round to know whether you are uh, fitting into the company or not that's it just don't lose the interview or an interview offer letter just because just because of one or two mistakes which you make in the uh, resume okay so just take the inputs they are very simple and uh, very easy to implement also if you want any resume formats or any kind of help from uh, tnp department of gvp we are ready to help you at any point of time thank you sir yeah varni thank you very much for uh, taking all the pains uh, in organizing all these things uh, but madam uh, thank you very much on behalf of the gvp staff of gvp tnp coordinators of gvp tnp team of gvp uh, entire management of gvp we are very much thankful to you for your valuable time and uh, it is really a wonderful workshop even uh, first actually I, i want to shift to another meeting but after starting listening to you uh, first 5 6 minutes and i said to that uh, uh, that group i will come little later so like that uh, i am tremendously I, i attended so many resume building workshops but your uh, workshop is so crystal clear madam with this uh, i think students can develop their resumes in a nice way and as you said if you if you are able to give the best resume and not so best resume then uh, students can think about that and thank you for a wonderful uh, session and uh, hoping to see you in the mock interviews and the last thing we want to see here in uh, gvp and in visakhapatnam thank you very much yes. day ahead madam students thank you very much give a big round of applause to uh, madam uh, you can give a virtual applause also thank you very <laughs> uh, once again everyone thank you thank you and all the very best students thank you Okay sir I am ending the meeting thank you Yeah Girish thank you very much